Good morning, Evangel, Evangel, uh, Christ Community Church. <laughs> Shows you I'm old. <laughs> Older every day. Um, glad you're here today. If you're a student, you are dismissed to go and be with whomever you belong to out there. Welcome. Glad you're here. Christopher, thank y'all. Bethany, thank you, thank you. Um... Trying to think. Tommy, is there anything I'm not saying that I need to say? Okay. All right. Well, I'm really glad you're here today. Uh, it's a special service. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking a moment at the end of the service to give honor to some people that um, have worked very hard for 12 years or longer uh, to graduate and um from high school, and so we want to give some honor to those that have done that today, and we'll do that at the end of the service. Um, I want, if you've got a copy of the scriptures, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 24. I don't know that I've um, found, I don't know, let me just say it this way. In preparing this lesson today, uh, God really gave me some great encouragement this week. And I needed that, and he was faithful to provide that. And I want him to do that for you today. I want this to be a very encouraging lesson. And so uh, I pray that you'll be open to that, that you'll be open to the Holy Spirit uh, giving you some real encouragement today. Uh, let me read this passage just real quickly. Uh, I think Brian's going to put it up on the screen, Lord willing. Matthew chapter 24, uh, verses 45 and through 47. If you've got a copy of the scriptures, you follow along. This is Jesus talking. If you've got a copy of the scriptures, it's got his words in red, then this ought to be in red. He says, Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household? To give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant when his master will find. Uh, blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you. He the master will set him the servant over all his possessions. That's, that's, a, that's bold talk. If I understand what Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying that from his perspective, and more importantly, if you will, from the perspective of his Father, God the Father, when God the Father gives a responsibility, a role to someone, one of his servants, and he then watches that servant over a period of time, Faithfully serve, faithfully carry out that role or those roles of service that the Father has given that, that person, that servant. The Father promises to reward that servant. Okay? I'm standing in front of a group of people. Uh, some of you I don't know very well at all, but the overwhelming majority of you I know very well. And I just want you to know that I, I feel very humbled to stand in front of some people that I believe that that passage that Jesus, that those words that Jesus just spoke, those words that I just read, I believe Jesus is talking to you. And my prayer today is that you will feel that, that you will hear that, that you will receive that as literally the Lord Jesus speaking to you about this faithful servant who has been given a role or a task and you have faithfully been fulfilling that role and God has been watching you do that. And he's pleased with you. 
He's pleased with you. He's pleased with you. Not sure you heard me. He's pleased with you. And he is so excited about the reward. We're going to read a verse in a little while that basically the, 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 the wording is a little, not vague, but the meaning behind the words is that some of you, if you're like me at all, about the 1st of October, I start getting excited about Christmas. And I start plotting and scheming and planning and, and uh, 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 organizing things and ordering stuff for Christmas. And I spend all of October, all of November, and most of December preparing something for people that I love. And I cannot wait for Christmas for us. It's Christmas Eve. For all that I've been planning to unfold. I cannot wait. I'm way more excited than anybody that's going to get this stuff. If you could multiply that by a billion, you still wouldn't begin. I, my theology would say you would not begin to grasp how excited your father is about what he's prepared for you. So I want you to think about that as we get into this, okay? All right. My wife was very nervous when I told her I was going to talk about something. And so you'll have to just bear with me, okay? But uh, we, we live in a world where many, 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 many different people, voices, are all trying to get us to do certain things. Uh, there, that we are bombarded every day with voices, people trying to convince us you ought to do this, whatever this is. Thousands of times a day we're bombarded with messages trying to convince us go to a certain school, buy a certain car, live in this neighborhood, eat these foods, use this bank, go to this place for vacation, shop at this store, watch this movie, listen to this song, participate in this group or activity, follow this plan. All these messages trying to convince us that, it, it, that you ought to heed this. And in every one of those situations, every one of those voices, every one of those messages, at the end of the Day, the ultimate reason that they all give, regardless of what they're trying to sell you, regardless of what they're trying to get you to do, every one of them, their final and ultimate reason for you to do this is the same. And that is, you will be so glad if you do. It'll be so worth it if you buy this house, buy this car, uh, move into this new uh, development, uh, uh, wh whatever it would be. Wear this outfit, go to this place, watch this movie, go to this, listen to this song. Whatever it is, if you just will do it, oh, you're going to be so happy. You're going to be so pleased. It's going to definitely be worth it. You'll be so glad. That you did, and you're going to be so sad if you don't. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20, Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. Now he's saying a lot there. But let me tell you one thing that I think he's saying. At the end of a person's life, If he has spent his life serving God, he's going to look back and go, that was a great life. That's a, that, that was a great life. 
I spent my life being a servant to God. And I'm so glad I did. It was worth it. Paul says it differently, but the same thing in Romans chapter 12. He says, friends, because of God's great mercy to us, I beg you to offer your lives as a living sacrifice to God. Dedicated to serving and pleasing Him. Both those verses, and I could give you many, many dozens more that all say the same thing that Jesus and Paul all are saying the same thing. And that is that those two men, Jesus and Paul, were convinced that it, a life of serving God is a life well spent. It's, it, they, were, they believed that a life of serving God is worth it. They both believed, if I'm understanding their teachings, that when a person devotes his life to serving God, when they end their life and they look back and evaluate, wow, this is what I spent my life doing. People that have spent their life serving God, they look back and as they evaluate it, they go, I'm glad I did that. It was worth it. And people that didn't spend their life serving God, they're sad. They're sad about it. They're like, ah, I wished I would have done that. I talk to people every day about their spiritual lives and their journeys and you know what I hear a lot is these kinds of things. Um, I believe, I, I, I'm, I'm a spiritual person. I'm a spiritual person. I believe being spiritual is important. Uh, I have faith in God and I think that's very, very vital uh, to, to have faith. That's a wise thing to do. Um, I believe in God. I have a, I have a strong belief in God, and I think that's important. Being spiritual matters. Having faith in God is important. Believing in God, that is an important, necessary part of a life well spent. But I want to I wanna challenge you. Should you be spiritual? Yes. Should you have faith in God? Yes. Should you believe in God? Yes. I'm not knocking those things. But I spent all week looking up, not every verse, but hundreds of verses where Paul talks about a life well spent. The life that you, were, you and I were created to live. And you know what I discovered? In the overwhelming majority, 90, maybe, I'll be conservative, 95%. Paul didn't encourage people to believe in God. Look up all the verses where Paul challenges people on how to live their life. Paul didn't encourage people that often to believe in God, to be spiritual, to have faith in God. You know what Paul overwhelmingly, consistently challenged people to do? Serve God. Serve God. Be a servant of God. Listen to what he says in uh, Galatians 5. For you were called by God... To be free. But don't use your freedom as an opportunity to be selfish. But instead, use your freedom in loving service. What about believing in God? What about trusting God? What about being a spiritual person? Oh, that's all good, good. But God has invaded your life. And given you a new life and adopted you into his family. And given you, made you a part of this incredible community. And this incredible calling of things that he's doing. And he's inviting you to be a part of. He doesn't want you just to believe. He doesn't want you just to be spiritual. He doesn't want you to just have faith. He wants you to be a servant. 
He wants you to serve him. Listen to what he says in 1 Corinthians 15. Dear friends, stand firm and steady and keep busy continually serving the Lord. Since you know that nothing that you do in serving the Lord is ever forgotten. Woo! That means, and I, I, I won't call names, I'd love to. I'd love to. Because I know what you do. I know those of you that spend time every day on your knees praying, interceding for others as an act of service unto God. I know some of you that sacrificially invest money in the kingdom of God and in helping people that are in need. I know of people who spend hours each month working on the finances of this church to make sure that we're going in the right direction and we stay in the black and we're, we operate with honesty and integrity. I know of people that spend way more hours than they should planning things for our church family that are wonderful and that creates love and friendship. I know of people that get up earlier and drive further so that they can be a blessing to people and bring people to church. I, I could go, oh, I know of people that cook meals for folks that would be hungry without that food. I could go on and on and on. People that plan mission trips so that August 1, two families will get up from a bed in a bedroom rather than from under the hood of a car leaned up against a fence or a tree. Serving, 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 doing things because they believe it's what God told them to do and they're doing it faithfully. I told you that we live in a world where people are always trying to get us to do things. And at the end of the day, the reason that they give is that it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. So I have a question for you. Is it worth it to serve God? I'm not talking about being a good person. I'm not talking about being biblically literate. I'm not talking about living a, 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 a righteous life. I, all the, oh, how wonderful all those are. Forgiving your enemies. Um, uh, I'm asking the question. In 50 years, those of you who spend your life Faithfully serving God. Maybe not like I do. Maybe not like your neighbor does. But you live your life in an attempt and in a desire to serve Him. In 50 years, will you look back and say, I'm glad I did that. I believe that it was worth it. Paul believed that was a question that's worth asking. Paul believes that's a question that's worth answering. But how can you know? How can you know if it's worth serving God? If it's a life that later on you'll look back and go, Whoa, I'm glad I did that. Or, I wished I had done that. How can you know? Bear with me. My kids... Rainy and Colton, they don't, it is remarkable to me, but they do not buy anything without going online and getting these customer testimonies. You know, like they'll have a list of people, Rainy showed them to me, where you have a list of people and they say, I bought this and I, it fit right and it was comfortable and it worked right. Or, or, and they don't go to a restaurant. They do not go to a restaurant. Crazy. They don't go to a restaurant without doing a, a, a crud, a Yelp review. 
they go, they do these things and they go in there and all these people have, been, have told them whether they like the resurrection. They don't do anything without getting reviews and testimonies from those that have used or gone, used these things or gone to these places. I wonder if that logic works with serving God. I wonder if we could look at some testimonies, some, some reviews by people that participated. I wonder, wonder what their reviews would be on a life spent serving God. So I want to try to do that real quickly. Ooh, got to hurry. So let me, I, I thought of three different categories of people that I would love if I was thinking about becoming a servant of the Lord, using my life in service to Him, I was thinking, who would I want to review from? First group that I thought of were people that were in the Bible. I wonder if I could get certain people in the Bible to write a review, a Yelp review or a customer testimony on, I spent my life serving the Lord Wonder what they would say. I, th- I think that's a reasonable question. So I started thinking, who, who would be, wouldn't you rather have a Yelp review from somebody that ate at a restaurant 30 times than a Yelp review from somebody that ate there once? Because you could have a bad meal. You know, anybody could have an odd deal, right? But somebody that ate there 30 times, now their review that, that, that has some weight to it, at least in my mind, way of thinking, right? So who would you ask? Who would be somebody that in the Bible, they spent their life serving God? Who would that be? Who are the key, if you will, forgive me, who are the key customers in the Bible that spent their life serving God? And I just ran through a list. I'd love to ask Noah. Noah, you spent a hundred years serving God by building a boat. And there wasn't a voice in your life that said anything other than, you're a fool. That is the craziest way to spend your life. What moron would spend their life serving God by building a boat when there was no bodies of water and it had never rained? Who would do that? But I'd love to pull up online. I'd have to get Randy to help me. But I'd love to pull up online the Yelp review or the customer testimony from Noah. Noah, was it worth it? Was it worth it? Wonder what he would say. I thought of Abraham. Abraham, you spent a hundred and... How long, how long did he live? 150? I don't know exactly how old he got. But he was old. He was real old. Um, I wonder, Abraham and Sarah, you served God your entire life, sacrificially, faithfully, in difficult times. You waited and you waited and you waited. I'm sure people mocked and laughed. Told you you're crazy. Was it worth it, Abraham? Was it worth it, Sarah? To spend your life in service. In fact, the Bible says that Abraham was a servant of the Lord. I wonder what Abraham and Sarah would say in their Yelp review. I thought of Joseph. I thought of Moses. I thought of Rahab. I thought of Joshua. I thought of Gideon and Ruth. Obviously, I thought of David. I thought of Daniel and his three friends. I thought of Esther. I thought of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Would you write down for me a little review? Or was it worth it? You seem to have spent your life serving this God. 
Are you glad you did? Was it something you'd do again? What I find unique about every one of those people. None of those people. Experience lives. Void of problems. Pain. Loss. Disappointment. Need. Or failure. It wasn't a plan that. Hey. If I serve this God. I'll get this yellow brick road path. It'll always be flat with a little decline so that you're walking downhill mostly. It'll be smooth and level. And uh, every, there's always going to be a Whataburger on one side and a Huey's on the other side with nice Willie Nelson music playing from the trees. Uh, bless you. And uh, 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 there'll be, uh, you'll be walking by a pretty girl that's nice. Uh, with children playing in front and behind that are obedient. And there'll be lots of cash in your pocket all the time. And you'll feel good as you go. No. You, now, I'll serve you if that's what the offer is. But these people didn't get that offer. They had great difficulty. Lives that made observers go, Why are you doing that? Why would you serve God? It doesn't seem to be worth it. And yet, my inclination, my suspicion is that if you asked them, not is it fun, but is it worth it? I send money every month and have since the day I walk down the aisle. I'm about to celebrate my 38th wedding anniversary with my bride here in about two weeks. Every month since we got married, I have sent money to a lady named Brenda Vanderslice. And for us, our little, she's a teacher and I'm a preacher. It's not a get rich quick scheme, trust me. Um, But we send money and have sent money every month for 38 years to this lady. Do you know never once has it been fun? I never got a good feeling. I never saw a light. I never heard any music. It and dang, if this lady, she doesn't send me jack. She, she doesn't ever like send me a gift or a nothing. You know, it's never, never like that. You know, but, but I send it. I send it. And I would tell you while the activity hasn't been fun, I don't know another plan. I have to be convinced. That it's worth it. I have to believe that. None of these people that I mentioned. Had lives. Where they got all they expected. Or all they ever dreamed of. That that wasn't the lives that they were given. And yet I wonder what they would say. If we asked them. Would you do it again? Is it really worth it? Noah and Abraham and Joseph and Daniel and David and Esther and Ruth and Mary. Would you do it again? Would you spend your life in faithful service to God? I wonder what their customer reviews and testimonies would say. I don't have that answer for every one of them. Some some of them did give us a review. Let me read one to you. Just one from Joshua in chapter 24. Joshua says to the people in front of him, Fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols that your ancestors worshipped and serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose whom you will serve. You can pick the gods of your ancestors or the gods of the Canaanites. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. It seems the testimony of the people in the Bible, the key customers, the main major players, not the 
fringe, marginal group. We don't know much about them. But the ones that we know quite a bit about, it seems like every one of them, if they could stand here today, they would say, George, I'm not telling you it was easy or fun, but I'm telling you it was worth it. It was worth it to serve God. Second category of reviews. You know who else I'd like to have a review from on is it worth it to serve God? I'd, um, I'd like to ask the person in charge. Those of you that are young, you won't remember this, but your parents would. Your, your, your parents will. When I was young, back that was when Noah was building that boat. Um, when I was young, there was a fellow that would come on TV. And he would say something like this. I started using a Remington razor. That's a, like an electric razor. And he said, I liked it so much, I bought the company. Remember that? Some of you remember how, how that? Um, uh, uh, oh, there was another one a long time ago. Uh, I forgot who it was, but anyway, it was, a, it was a men's hair company. And a dude came on, and he, I guess he needed to grow some hair. I don't remember that. But he said something to the effect, I started using or being a part of the men's hair club. That's what it was, the men's hair club. And I liked it so much, I bought the company. These are people that didn't just, they weren't just selling stuff. They actually used it and loved it. Or like the dude, the, uh, uh, the pillar guy, which is, they're horrifying commercials. But anyway, the guy that sells those, he's on all the time, uh, the, sells these pillows. And you can just tell, he loves these pillows. I, I, and I think he says all the time, I use this pillow. This is my pillow. I don't just try to sell you one. I use this pillow. This is a great product. And then the guy on the pizza uh, well, one of the pizza places, the guy that says, we, I, he says, you know, if you take a picture of your pizza and send it to me, you'll get some credits or something. I don't know exactly how that works. But anyway, he says, I love our pizza. I eat our pizza. I'm not only the guy that runs this company. I also enjoy the product that we're selling. So my question is this. I wonder what Jesus what what Jesus' Yelp review would be? He's sort of the CEO of the company, isn't he? He's sort of the, 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 the owner of the company, the president of the corporation. Wonder what Jesus would write in a Yelp review about serving God. I thought that was a reasonable question. This is the guy that runs the show. What would you say about serving God? And I thought of three things real quickly. Number one, Jesus' M.O. Do you know what I discovered from the Bible, from the Old Testament? The Old Testament says hundreds of things about who Jesus would be. Traits and qualities that if you looked for those traits and qualities, you could recognize he would be the Messiah because he would possess those traits and qualities. Do you know the number one trait that the Old Testament said, if you want to watch and recognize who the Messiah will be, who the Son of God will be, the num not he'll be the it won't be his holiness. He was holy. But that the Bible doesn't say if you watch, find the holiest fella, that's the Messiah. It's not his wisdom. Find the wisest person, that's the Messiah. His power. Find, find, find the guy that has the most power. That's, the Old Testament doesn't primarily declare if you want to see who the Messiah will be when he comes, it won't be his power. It won't be his wisdom and it won't be his holiness. It'll be that he's a servant. Read Isaiah 53. The person that will come that you can know he is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Anointed One of God, it'll be the person that spends his life the most faithfully and the most passionately serving God. Not only his M.O., Jesus' personal promise. How many, 
I don't know how many parables Jesus taught. Let's just say 40, give or take. The overwhelming majority of Jesus' parables. Do you know what they talk about? Living a holy life. No. Praying. No. Being wise. Nope. Doing miracles. Nope. The overwhelming majority of the parables that Jesus taught serve God faithfully. Serve God faithfully. Jesus says in John 12, If anyone wants to serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be. If anyone serves me, my Father will honor him. Not just Jesus' MO, not just Jesus' promise, but Jesus' Example, Jesus' own experience. In Philippians 2, Paul says this about Jesus. Don't spend your life putting yourself first. Serve others as well. Embrace the attitude that Jesus had. Though he was God, he didn't cling to his divinity. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and took the role of a servant and humbled himself in obedience to God And died on a cross. Therefore. Because Jesus did that. Therefore God elevated him. To the place of highest honor. And gave him the name that is above all names. And at the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will declare. That Jesus is Lord. Wonder what Jesus' Yelp review would look like. Wonder what if we could get Jesus to come back here today and say, Jesus, you spent 33 years more faithfully than anyone else that's ever lived. You served God the Father faithfully. Was it worth it? Would you do it again? Are you glad that that's how you used your life? It seems that the testimony of the Bible's major players, it seems that the testimony of Jesus, the head of the operation, seems to be it was worth it. Thirdly, I'm in a room of people Many of which I watch you week in and week out faithfully serving God. Are you the nicest people I know? (laughs) Not even close. (laughs) Are you the sharpest, smartest group? I've I've met lots of people smarter than y'all. Holiness, that's not your strong suit. Power, long way to go. But it it humbles me and I stand in awe as I watch some of you Faithfully spend your life serving God. What's your Yelp review? Miss Ann, I've watched you serve God since I was in my early 20s. That was a long time ago. You don't have to say anything, but wonder what your Yelp review would be like. What he would say. I've had the the horrifying privilege, the tragic privilege of being at the bedside of many people who died. Part of my work, part of what I do for a living. 
I sit in hospital rooms and I watch people die. I hold their hands. I watch them die. I've done it more times than I can count. I've never, in, I've been a pastor for 42 years. I've never once in 42 years sat by the bedside of someone that I knew faithfully served God. They worked in the nursery week in and week out. They taught Sunday school. They went down to the mission. They, they, they ministered to people in need. They, they, they did things as service unto the Lord. Not just when they had some emotional hiccup or it was a, the fun, cool thing to do or when they were really in a bad place and they thought, if I do this, maybe that'll create some spiritual karma and it'll get me out of this, this bad jam I'm in. And all those. I mean, these are people that for 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years, they served God faithfully. I've never once sat by their bedside and these people looked at me with the little energy they had left and said, you know what? I've served God my entire life. It was a waste. It was a waste. I, I wished I would have done something else. I've never once. I've had hundreds of people Tell me they did not spend their life serving God. And they are so sad. They're so sad. I won't do it. I thought about it, but I won't. But I, I thought about asking some of you, was it worth it? Was it worth it? You've spent your life serving God. Are you sad? Did you regret it? Are you sorry? Was it a waste? Y'all are about to go into your adult lives. Not that you're not. I know you're adults. But believe it or not, you're going to even become more adults here in the next year or two. I promise. You're about to go into your adult lives. And the way Joshua put it in Joshua... That, that verse that I read, he said, choose today who you're going to serve. The implication is every one of us are going to spend our lives serving something. Every one of us. What I think Joshua would say is, I beg you to consider serving God. Serve God. Because I think it's worth it. It does not, it's not a magic rabbit's foot or lucky charm. It doesn't create roses um, along the way. It's hard, it's difficult, but it's worth it. I started off today saying to you, I want you to leave here encouraged. Those of you, golly, Bill. The Lord sees. In Malachi chapter 3, God promises this. God spoke to his people. And this is his people asked God, is it really worth it to serve the Lord? What have we gained from doing that? And here was God's response. You will see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked you will see the distinction between people who have served the Lord and people who have not. In Hebrews chapter 6, God says, God is not unjust. He won't forget your work and your love that you've shown Him as you have served the Lord. And in Colossians chapter 3, Paul says, Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. As if you are serving the Lord and not people. Remember that the Lord will bless you with the reward that he has been saving for his people. I'm not talking about being good. I'm not talking about 
just believing, being spiritual, having faith. Those are things that are so good, so nice. But what Paul challenged us to do was to serve God. It'll look differently for every one of us. But so don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. Serve God. Find out what God put you on this planet to do. And it's not just make money and buy houses and cars and have little kids and raise them up. That's all good stuff. But he put us here with a purpose and that is to serve him in some unique way that will leave the world a better place than we found it. It'll be worth it. It's a testimony of the people in the Bible. It's a testimony of the man that's running the whole show. And I believe it's the testimony if I could ask people in this room to stand up. You'd say it's worth it. It's confusing. It's all get out. And it's aggravating often. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. First Samuel chapter 12 says, Be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve Him. Think of all the wonderful things that He has done for you. You know the thing that the Lord's done for us the most? He sent His Son to die on the cross to pay for my sins and create a bridge upon which I can walk across and enter into God's family and enter into a friendship with God himself. Jesus wants us to think about that. And as we think about it, he wants us to take bread and eat it and drink wine. And as we do, think about his body. Think about his blood. Think about his sacrifice. And rejoice and give thanks. And maybe recommit ourselves to spend in our lives serving Him, serving Him, serving Him in some unique way. Um, Peggy, would you and Mom, I did, yeah, uh, you're praying. Right, Peggy and Terry, y'all come up here. You got to earn your keep today. Come on up here. I want you to serve the Lord by helping me. How about that? One of y'all stand right there and one of y'all stand right there. The Bible says that this bread represents the Lord Jesus. The juice and the wine in those, on those trays represent his blood. If you have experienced the goodness of the Lord, if you have been blessed to realize that he died for you, and you said, I believe that, I receive that, I want that for me. I need that. If that's your testimony, then you come and you eat and you drink and you give thanks for what the Lord has done for you. There'll be people on my right and my left, specifically my mom and Michael. Uh, they'll be by the windows on both sides. They would love to pray with you if that is your need. If you need somebody to pray for you today about anything, they would love to do that.